Well hello there folks, this is Lyage and welcome to a Monster Hunter Rise playstyle guide. In this series we will be exploring unique and interesting ways to play each of the game's 14 different weapon types. In each video I will be covering a specific build or playstyle for a given weapon that may just make it feel completely different. Whether you've played the weapon for 100 hours or are picking it up for the first time, you might just discover a cool new way to play. As a disclaimer, these videos will not be full weapon tutorials. I will be going over a few key techniques and combos relating to the particular playstyle, but to learn about everything a weapon has to offer, there are already some great tutorials out there. I am also not claiming that any of these playstyles will be the most efficient ways to play, but I have the hope that they will provide a fun change of pace for your hunts. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, at the time of making this video, the 2.0 update for Monster Hunter Rise has just released and there is already a whole lot of potential for creating brand new builds. With some of the new armor and decorations, I have already been able to vastly improve a few of my existing builds that have previously needed a bit of work. One of said builds is a rather interesting hammer build that I have been using a fair amount. After the gun lance, the hammer is my currently second most used weapon in Monster Hunter Rise and for good reason. The hammer has always been a weapon that I have had a lot of respect for, but the Rise iteration of the weapon feels like it might just be its best yet. In this video I will be sharing the hammer build I have been using which I also feel lends itself to a rather unique way to play the weapon. We will start by going over the main concept behind this build before going over some techniques to effectively play it. At the core of this build we have this cool golden hammer which carries the paralysis status. Now let's think about that for a second. We have a hammer which is the master of KOs and then we put paralysis on top of that. If we combine these two effects right, we could be immobilizing monsters for days. In a few past games there was a particular hammer known as the jail hammer and it also happened to carry the paralysis status. I feel like that name perfectly describes this build because if played correctly, we have the potential to completely lock down a monster. Now then, let's go over what kinds of things I have put on this build. Starting with the weapon, there are actually two current options for paralysis hammer, and the option we are using is actually the one with the lower paralysis. When comparing the two hammers, I prefer the Iron Devil Soul over the Volvodon hammer simply because it has far more damage. Also with the green sharpness we can build into Bludgeoner, and it also happens that we can get the Paralysis Boost 3 Rampage skill, which allows the hammer to almost close the gap for the Paralysis value. Now let's go over our armor skills. Thanks to some build optimization, I am able to run Attack Boost level 7 for a great damage boost. We are also running level 3 Paralysis attack to boost the power of our Paralysis. With this hammer's healthy green sharpness, level 3 bludgeoner will also give us a great damage boost. Up next we have level 3 slugger and that'll of course help us get those KOs. Next, stamina thief level 3 is a fun one to have because it'll increase our exhaust power and that gives us yet another way to lock down the monster. We've also got the focus skill. This will boost our hammer's charge speed, although I don't think this skill is critical on the hammer because we can charge while we're running around looking for openings. Still nice to have though. I also ended up with a point of Marathon Runner, and this is also decent as it slows our stamina depletion whilst charging up our hammer. It is now time to go over the basics for this playstyle. To play this build effectively, we may have to find ourselves playing a little different than how one might normally play the hammer. The most important concept for us to grasp is that we have to stagger our KOs and paralyzes in order to keep the monster locked down as much as possible. The thing we absolutely want to avoid is landing a KO and then paralyzing the monster before the monster gets back up, or vice versa. It may look cool to chain these two effects together, in fact I've got some rather stylish clips of me doing this, but this is unfortunately not what we want to happen. You see, we want to make full use of each stun to do as much damage as possible, but if you interrupt one stun with another, you have essentially wasted the first one. Thankfully, we actually can make use of a few techniques to ensure that each effect triggers roughly when we want it. For starters, let's cover how to effectively trigger paralysis with the hammer. If you are familiar with how status buildup works, you might actually think that the hammer is one of the less effective weapons at applying status. To give a quick rundown on status buildup, basically for every hit you do with a status weapon, you have the chance of applying some of your weapon's status effects to a monster's tolerance. 
for our paralysis, you can see the effect being applied anytime we get one of these yellow clouds after a hit. Once the buildup exceeds a monster's tolerance, the monster will be inflicted with that status. Traditionally, because the faster weapons hit more, they will inflict status buildup much faster. To compensate, slower weapons are usually given more status attack, but the faster weapons will usually still apply the effects faster. However, even though the hammer is on the slower side for weapons, it does have the potential to apply some very decent status buildup through a few moves. First things first, we have the Spinning Bludgeon. This attack is one that is usually avoided in standard hammer playstyles due to its long animation and just being kinda hard to use in general. However, this move gives us quite a few rapid hits, which is just the thing we need to quickly build up our paralysis. To use this move, we want to fully charge our hammer and release the charge button while moving. If you are used to using the hammer's charge switch, you probably almost never see this move normally as it is only available in the default yellow hammer mode. However, the charge switch does actually give us a nice shortcut to get to the spinning bludgeon. If you are in the switched blue mode, performing a switch back to the yellow mode performs a cool little dash and gives us an instant full charge. If you release the button immediately while moving, you will go right into the spinning bludgeon. Now once we are spinning, we have 4 options for ending the move depending on how long we go. First, if we do nothing, we will end the spin with an awkward animation where we kinda fall over with the hammer. This is generally the worst option since it gives us quite a bit of ending lag. Next, if we press the X button after doing 3 or 4 spins, we will end with an upswing finisher. This is our best option for damage as the finisher is quite powerful. If we press the X button after we've started spinning but before performing 3 spins, we will perform an abbreviated finisher that does less damage but allows us to end the attack early. Finally, if we press the X button right after we've started the attack but before our first proper spin, we will perform a really quick side smash. This is good for if you quickly change your mind right after starting the attack and need to cancel out of it. With good use of this attack, we can inflict a rather reliable amount of paralysis buildup, and so when we are not going for a KO, this attack is a great one to use. Our second option for inflicting great paralysis buildup is the Silkbind Spinning Bludgeon. This is one of the Silkbind switch skills that we can choose from. In this playstyle, I would highly favor it over the other option due to its ability to deal rapid hits. This Silkbind is performed with ZL plus X. If you hold down the ZR button, you can delay your launch by holding onto the wire bug. This will charge your hammer, but it takes longer than charging your hammer normally. You can alternatively fully charge your hammer normally and then launch the attack with a full charged hammer for the same effect. If this attack is fully charged, the final hit will deal more damage, but the individual hits stay the same regardless. This attack is one of the more fun features added to the hammer, and it is super satisfying to pull off. However, being able to use this attack well is something that can take time to master. While you are in the air, it is super easy for a monster to slap you down, so it takes a lot of restraint to only launch yourself during a safe opening. This is where delaying your launch can come in handy as you can hold yourself back until the perfect moment. These two moves that I have just covered are our bread and butter for inflicting paralysis status, but the thing that we need to remember is that even these attacks still do lots of KO damage if we hit the monster in the head, so we will actually want to make an effort to avoid the head when going for a paralyze. We should think of our playstyle as having two modes that we switch between. Every time we inflict a paralyze or a KO, we want to switch mode and start trying to go for the opposite one. While we are in paralysis mode, we want to use quick hitting attacks like the ones that we just covered and also generally avoid hitting the head of the monster. While we are in KO mode, we can basically do anything else and wail on the head as much as we want. Now while we are going for KOs, our playstyle becomes closer to how the hammer is often played. I won't go over all of our hammer techniques, but let's cover a few of my favorites. One of the most satisfying burst damage hits for the hammer is our second Silkbind the Impact Crater. This silk find is performed with ZL plus A and lets us launch straight up and come right back down for a huge hit. With this move you cannot charge while holding the wire bug, but if you do use it while your hammer is fully charged, you will do far more damage. Before you land the attack, you can also aim your hammer with the left analog stick. Depending on the direction you hold, you can pinpoint right where the attack will hit. Make sure to land this hit squarely on the monster's head for some great KO damage. If the attack is charged, the final hit also deals 2 hits, so make sure you aim just right to get both of them off. 
However, do also note that this move deals a lot of Wyvern Ride damage, so be careful that you do not trigger a KO and a Wyvern Ride in the same hit, since that would be a waste. After getting your first Wyvern Ride, you should be good to use this move as much as you want for the rest of the hunt. Alright, so there are many more hammer moves that are great for dealing heavy damage and KO, but as this is not a full weapon tutorial, I will not be covering them in depth right now. Instead, I would like to take this time to cover one of my favorite hammer moves in general, the Water Strike. While not specific to this playstyle, this move is probably one of my favorite additions to the hammer, so I wanted to take some time to cover it. This move is one of the hammer's switch skills, and I really haven't found a reason to not have it equipped ever. Basically, this move is just a parry for the hammer. With a quick press of the A button, you will perform this tiny little hit. This move comes out nice and quick, and also lets you go into your big bang combo if needed. The only thing you lose with this move when compared to the skill that it replaces is that the other move can chain into your standard X combo, but that is a tiny price to pay. In return, this move will let you completely absorb almost any attack in the game. If you happen to be right up on the monster, you can then follow up with an extremely powerful upswing. I gotta say, nothing is more satisfying than getting a KO with this move. We're gonna learn these counter timings. This is a really scary one to do. Oh, but that was so cool! Oh my god! The timing on this will take a bit of practice to learn, but this move gives you lots of utility and also infinite style points because you are literally just countering an attack by hitting it with your hammer. Since we've already brought up a few of the hammer's switch skills, let's just do a general overview of them now. In our first slot, we will simply be taking the Water Strike because of how useful it is. It is not necessary to this playstyle, but I would always take it anyways. In our second slot, we will be taking the Silkvine Spinning Bludgeon. As we discussed earlier, this attack hits multiple times, which means it is great for building paralysis. The second option could also be feasible because it gives you Hyper Armor and preserves your charge, which means you could use it to advance on a monster and then use your regular Spinning Bludgeon. However, since the Silkbind Spinning Bludgeon does multiple hits itself, I think I would prefer it for this playstyle. Now the third slot is a bit of a weird choice for me. For starters, we won't really spend a lot of time in our switched mode because we want to use the Spinning Bludgeon from the default mode. Initially, I was going to make the recommendation that we use Charge Switch Strength because it has a quicker activation animation, which means we can quickly switch into the stance and then switch back out to get our freely charged hammer. However, after playing around with the Charge Switch Courage, I did feel like this mode could also have some potential usages. With this mode, you can combo multiple charges together in succession, and this might just be a good way to rack up some good hits for that paralysis buildup. In addition, and this is only something I learned when testing in the training area, when you freely charge a hit in this mode, your swings hit twice. Now, I don't think this is still as efficient as using these spinning bludgeons to build up your paralysis, but it still seems quite decent. In the end, I would put this choice up to your preference. For my demo, I will be using the strength mode, but I also end up staying in yellow mode for most of the hunt. And we will use that segue to jump into our demo hunt now. I know I didn't cover a whole lot of additional hammer techniques, but I will try to cover a few of the remaining ones as I perform them in the hunt. Once again, as we are getting started here, I would like to quickly recommend some food skills for this build. The Dongo Slugger skill should give us a boost to our KO power. Meanwhile, the Dongo Specialist skill will improve our paralysis attack. As usual, we will be demoing against a Rathian. This is a monster that I have always found particularly fun to fight with the hammer, with predictable movements and an easy to reach head. Once we have Rathian's attention, we will go ahead and make use of our Water Strike. This move is a perfect counter for Roars because it lets us ignore the stun and puts us in just the spot to land a beautiful hit to the head. Here we have used a few spinning attacks to try to build up some paralysis. However, it looks like we will get the KO first. Because I don't want the paralysis to trigger immediately after the KO, we will use this opening to perform an impact crater. This is always a good option when the monster is down to just to do some great damage with few hits. And right on cue, our first paralysis has triggered, so now we can start working towards our second KO. 
with our second impact crater, we have triggered our wyvern ride. Now we shouldn't have to worry about this move messing up our other stuns. You know what? Let's throw in another impact crater because the wyvern ride had recharged our wire bugs. And there's KO number two already. Here I switch into blue mode to get a nice big damage hit and then switch right back out to start spinning for our second paralysis. Ah, here's our usual interruption. Fine, let's go ahead and get this over with. I do love that impact crater. Such a satisfying attack. Ah, here is paralysis number two. Once again, time to focus on more big KO moves. Like, I don't know, Habit Impact Crater. and KO number 3 has shown up quite soon. I guess we can start to work towards a third paralysis, although at this point I'm just starting to feel bad for Rathian. Let me get one more bonk in before you go. Let's take a quick interlude to play a game I like to call Bombadgy Bowling. Ah, oh, we missed one. I guess we can pick up the spare next time. It seems Rathian wasn't having any of our flying around. As we discussed, landing this move without getting smacked down can take a whole lot of practice. Just felt my life flash before my eyes for a second. Because I know Rathian will do up to two backflips when angry, we can use the opening after the second one as a perfect window for our Silkbind Bludgeon. And there is a beautiful knockdown into our third paralysis. You're lucky my impact crater wasn't quite ready there. I'm gonna stop you right there. So Rathian has now reached the exhaustion phase. This will likely seal her fate. Ah cool, fourth KO for good measure. You know what it's time for now. Bonk. And there we have it. 
In total, we got 7 separate stuns, not including other staggers and knockdowns. This build is a whole lot of fun to play solo, but I think it might really shine online as well where you have others to take advantage of all these stuns. That will do it for this video, as always thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, the old like, comment, and subscribe would be a great way to show your support. If you've been looking at some of my other videos, you might have also noticed my recent video where I hunted Camellios for the first time. This was a highlight taken from my Twitch stream. I do hope to start doing some more live streams on Twitch for some more unscripted content, so go ahead and follow my channel over there if you're interested. So I guess that's about it for now, so once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.